Thanks, Sabrina. We are here now with uh, two Republican senators to get their reaction. Um, senator uh, Frank Blas Jr. as well as uh, Senator Eileen Yamashita. Thanks so much for joining uh, joining me now. Um, we've obviously ha heard the, the, the Congresswoman's speech this morning about an hour. Uh, yesterday there was a lot of impassioned speeches on session floor about Resolution 48, which was presented to the Congresswoman this morning. What was your overall reaction? You have been uh, a huge critic of the Congresswoman and, and specific things that have happened in Washington. Washington this past year? Um, we had an hour of what? Uh, you know, uh, again, you know, it, it, one thing that I can appreciate uh, with the Cong Congresswoman's speech um, was her acknowledgement that there may have been a gap in the communications with the people of Guam on, uh, on activity, on certain issues uh, that, uh, that affect the people of Guam. Uh, more specifically in the area of the, of the uh, military buildup. Um, you know, uh, recognizing that, that, that she is the, the representative there, um, I think we were very much interested in hearing how she proposes to be able to deal with, with this issue. I, don't, I, I firmly believe that this is not an issue that uh, we should have to negotiate out. Uh, um, or, and this is something that has to be addressed uh, with, with no strings attached. It's, um, it, it is really unacceptable, not only to the people of Guam, but as an, I'm sure it's unacceptable to anywhere else in the world that you would have a, 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 a federal government uh, impose on, on uh, the actions and um, the, the uh, makings of, of, of a state or local government. Um, that said, um, you know, a lot of the speech, the concern that I have with regards to the last speech, there was not too much with regards to how we're going to be, how uh, the people of Guam and the community can, will empower, be empowered uh, to be able to, to uh, uh, in, improve their lives. Uh, there seems to be her reliance and uh, as well as Washington's continued uh, thinking that uh, you know that the that the communities have to rely or should and need to rely on on uh, federal government spending on us. Um, I would have preferred a speech that would talk about how um, our communities can grow, um, a legislation that would, would free up you know some of the, the government bureaucracy from the, at the federal level, so that uh, the communities can 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 be can actually take part in being able to to improve itself. Uh, with less reliance on the federal government. I would have appreciated that kind of tone as opposed to the tone of, um, you know, uh, you know, the, the government is always going to be in there to help. The government is not always going to be there to help, as is, as is, as is the case uh, now. And, um, you know, for her, to, I, I, I would have appreciated a better tone with regards, again, uh, on how to uh, in, improve a community and using a lot of community support. Well, don't go anywhere. I still have more questions for you. Um, Senator Yamashita, what were your overall thoughts yesterday um, on session floor? You, were very, uh, you gave a very impassioned speech about how uh, it's time for the people of Guam to be, do something bold and dramatic. Um, and so having listened to the speech today, what were your overall thoughts? Well, you know, I, I, um, in keeping with the Congresswoman's um, topic or theme of winning for the future, it just becomes clearer and clearer to me as I learn more and more and as I listen and reflect um, that our political status issue really needs to be addressed. You know, I listen to her and she's achieved and she continues to uphold our flag and she moves forward, but I really don't think that she has the kind of status or position she needs to, to really make our island that's 30 miles long count. I mean, we're significant, obviously, because we're a, a topic of conversation. Uh, we're needed, for sure, strategically, uh, and, and, and there's no doubt that we're all proud to be be American, but I don't think we count. I don't think that our issues um, are really uh, critical to the decision makers as they make this de their decisions. And so, you know, I listened to her, and, and again, she's she's achieved much, and she certainly stands for us. But she needs the um, the clout. She needs to be a voting member. She needs to have um, a status behind her that uh, that would help anybody in that position really move it forward. And so, um, and now it's up to the governor and us to for, to negotiate again and, and get uh, to address what's set, cited in 111. And, and I just think it they should have never been there to begin with. And I, I just um, we you know we need to really pay attention to what's going on. And I do stand by my statement. We need to be smarter and we need to be bolder. And, and you know and, and sometimes drama works and 
sometimes it doesn't, but honestly, and in the spirit of in a formalic, it is our Guam way to be respectful, but sometimes I think that's to our, to our demise. And I hate saying that because, you know, I'm one who always says if we can talk together and work together, but honestly, sometimes I'm thinking, folks just think, oh, well, you know, it's Guam. It, it doesn't really matter. You know, we're, we're just going to have to do what we need to do for the bigger picture. And I get that. I really understand that. But I think that it, it needs to be really clear that every single one of us counts. And, and, you know, we don't get to vote. And, I, you know, I, I can hear everybody already saying, well, you get all of this money and the sound of freedom, and, you know, we go on and on. But it's time to move forward and to vote and to count and to have our voice heard and to make that difference. I just think the time is now, and that's what we need to do. Thank you, Senator. And, you know, if I could bring you back, Senator Blasen, you could stay here as well, Senator Yamashita. Um, one of the points that she brought up that towards the end of the speech was this, uh, she promises to be respectful and courteous. And um, she, did you feel that she was implying that towards uh, any one of the, the members of the legislature? Um, and, f well, maybe if you could first answer that question. No, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, with regards to, to it has always been, you know, no, me personally as well as, and I can speak for, for the other members of the legislature. Um, you know, when we, when we argue things in the hall, we have to argue, argue things without fear of, of, um, of any retribution or whatnot because we need to speak freely of what the sentiments are of the people. Now, that said, as we recognize that, uh, you know, uh, with regards to, to respect, uh, as was, uh, you know, articulated by my, by my colleague here, Senator Yamashita, you know, we, we are respectful. We continue to be respectful. Uh, but there comes a point in time when, um, because of the respect and the, and the, and the honor and the privilege that we, we, we provide, you know, um, it's not reciprocated. And so I think that with regards to the respect, it was not so much directed towards us. It was probably directed towards the United States, the federal government, in recognizing that we have to be respected as, as a people here in Guam. We have to be respected as small as our island may be. You know, and as and as and as minute as our population may be in comparison to the rest of the nation, uh, we are significant. We are significant in our own right. We are significant in, in, in as far as they've stated the defense of the nation and the stability of the region. And I think based just based on that, because of who we are and as basic ba basic humans, there has to be that degree of respect. We're going to continue the dialogue, but I think I, I have to agree, I agree with with uh, Senator Yamashita. You know, maybe our dialogue has to be a little bit more forceful. And it should be, and it's going to be a little bit more forceful. Uh, because, again, there is respect that uh, we're not demand, it's a respect that we, we, we should expect. And, um, and so, you know, with regards to, to her, uh, her topic or her, her discussion with regards to respect, I believe that was more directed to the federal government. Amongst us, you know, and, and, and I can, one can, can say, I'm sure many that, that you can agree, you know, and a lot of people agree, okay? Uh, she and I, have agreed to disagree on a number of occasions. You know, uh, we may have our, our, we may be vocal with each other, and we may be hot-tempered with each other every once in a while. But at the end of the day, it's working for what's best for the people of Guam. So I've got to ask you. There was a, a lot of talk this morning, last night, of uh, rumors of, of a walkout by members of the legislature. Uh, had you guys not heard or received the, um, the apology or whatever you wanted to hear from the congresswoman on the issue of FENA, um, as well as uh, the issue of the the CCU uh, DOD sitting on uh, CCU? Can you confirm whether or not the members of the legislature were planning a walkout? I will confirm that there has been discussions of uh, you know amongst members of the legislature of taking, you know, um, some action uh, that would help to send uh, a message back to Washington, D.C. of the people's sentiment concerning, you know, more, uh, more specifically the provision that was incl included in NDA that has a far-reaching effect, you know, more so than the CCU. Uh, as, as Senator uh, Yamashita and I have, have argued yesterday, how far is it going to, how far is it going to go before we as a people are going to be recognized? We have to take a, a bold stand. Now, um, you know, in, 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 uh, you know uh, with, with the congresswoman being able to address it the way she had addressed it and recognizing, okay, and as, as, as Senator Yamashita stated, you know, we have to recognize that, that uh, the limited powers that she's got over there, and, and maybe she should take that message to back. You know, she says, look, my people are, are demanding a greater voice in this area. We're going to give her that opportunity. It goes back to the respect. We're going to give her the respect in being able to answer and to, and, and, and to, and 
to answer some of the issues and some concerns. Did she did she uh, 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 answer those things in, in the in the speech? Maybe not to the liking or not to the spe specificity as a lot of people should, would expect. But I, I you know I, I think I can read the be between the lines and recognizing that she saw that there was a huge gap. Uh, and, and as far as the communication, she's willing to be able to work, and she wants to work uh, towards closing that gap. We need that gap closed because we don't want that. We we don't want any other entity outside of the government of Guam, outside of the people of Guam, to take advantage of those things. Sorry, I was just anything you'd like to add. Just, just that you know, um, as Senator Blas was saying that the messages that we're sending um, are to that position, to their delegates' position, and we are asking Congress to take note, pay attention. You know, resolution after resolution, and this is the first time I've been in this legislature, but I know that they have reflected and crafted and, and in good spirit met with so many people, and yet now we're being told to pay for our water. I mean, it's like well, something's wrong with that picture. So, you know, the message is uh, pay attention to what we're saying. And if we had to, I would have walked out. If I didn't know that you were not seriously listening to what we're saying for all our people, I would have walked out with pride. The message has to be heard. We are changing the landscape of our island hugely with this buildup. We are proud to be American. We're even prouder to be Guamanians. And so that, that's really how I feel. And I'm, again, I'm, I'm new to this, but I see what they've all done. And it's just like, we need to be seriously paid attention to. We look forward to the continued discussions and efforts that, that you will uh, continue to make. And we will, of course, bring you uh, more reaction from Speaker Wanpad, the governor, as well as other members of the 31st Guam Legislature tonight on primetime. Back to you.